Hello, I'm Jill at ingvid.com and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at an English poem and I know you're probably thinking poetry, that's too difficult. Um, English prose is hard enough but poetry, ah, no. But I'm hoping to make you realise that it is possible to read an English poem and to understand it. Um, I've chosen quite an easy, straightforward one. It's called The Owl and the Pussycat, which is in the first line here. And it was written by a poet called Edward Lear. Edward Lear in 1871. Okay, and Edward Lear was well known for his uh, humorous writing. So a lot of his writing is funny. It makes you smile, it makes you laugh. So hopefully this poem will do that for you. And so it tells a story. It's in three sections. This is the first of three sections. And I'm just going to go through it with you and I will explain any words that I think maybe need explaining and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so um, I'll read it. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. Okay, now the owl, do you know what an owl is? You, you probably know what a bird is. A bird that flies? Well, an owl is the kind of bird that um, is awake at night. It's, uh, it has big round eyes. Um, if you look it up on Google Images, you'll see lots of pictures of owls. Okay, so we have a bird here, an owl, and a pussycat. I'm sure you know what a cat is. We use the word pussycat it's a sort of a comic name or a, um, an affectionate name for a cat. People say, oh, puss, 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 yeah, pussy, pussy, pussy. So it's a name for a cat. Um, and children also say, oh, pussy cat, pussy cat. So pussy is a cat. But here it's being called pussy cat with a hyphen. So the owl and the pussycat. So we have a bird and a cat, okay, which usually birds and cats don't usually make friends. Uh, usually the cat is going to attack the bird and kill it probably. But in this poem, because it's Edward Lear and because he's being funny, He's put a, a bird and a cat together and they're not just friends, but they're, they're going on a journey together. They're, they're on a trip together. So we'll see what happens, shall we? So the owl and the pussycat went to sea, on the sea. So even more, oh, dangerous, went to sea in a beautiful Pea green boat. So they're in a boat, you know the word boat on the sea. A boat. Uh, it's pea green. It's not just a green boat, it's the colour of a green pea, the vegetable that you eat, little green peas. So it's pea green. We have all sorts of shades of green, olive green. Um, sage green, light green, dark green, pea green. So the boat is the colour of a green pea. No particular reason. It just it just sort of fits. The, the rhythm, because rhythm is important. In a beautiful pea green boat, something had to go in there. Um, okay, so what did they take with them? They took... Some honey, you know honey, the sweet stuff that the bees 
go to flowers and then they make honey. Honey, it's like jam, only it's honey in a pot, very sweet. You put it on the bread and eat it or you put it in a pudding or something. They took some honey and plenty of money. Well, that was sensible. They're not very sensible, I don't think, going onto the sea in a boat, but at least they've been sensible enough to take some money with them. Okay, plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. Okay, well here, this is a modern five pound note. It has the queen on it. Okay, and some other pictures on the back. Five pound note, but that's quite small compared with in 1871, a five pound note, I think, was a lot bigger than this, and it was a big white sheet of paper, so much easier to wrap other things in. You wouldn't be able to wrap much in this little thing. You can't buy much with it either these days. Anyway, ah, they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up wrapped so if you wrap something up you put it inside and you fold the pieces over and that's wrapped up okay wrapped up in a five pound note i just hope that the honey and the money didn't get all oh, that would be horrible oh i hope they managed to keep it separate anyway wrapped up in a five pound note right the owl looked up to the stars above. So it's night time and the stars are in the sky. Little stars in the sky. Looking up at the sky is very romantic at night. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang a singing owl. You see, I told you it was funny. This, he's not just singing. He's playing a musical instrument and sang to a small guitar. Oh. I told you it was a bit funny. Well, it's called nonsense poetry. That's the technical name for this nonsense. So non is the negative prefix. Sense and sensible sense we try to be sensible but nonsense is the opposite this is a nonsense poem okay he sang to a small guitar i wonder what an owl sounds like when it's singing usually they just make a hooting sound like hoo, 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 like that so i hate to think what they sound like when they're singing Anyway, this is what he sang, which you can tell from the quotation mark. He's singing, Oh, lovely pussy. So he likes the cat, which is just as well, because they're off in a boat on the sea, all on their own. Oh, lovely pussy. Oh, pussy, my love. So he loves the cat. These two animals that usually hate each other. Oh, pussy, my love, what a beautiful pussy you are. You are. You are. In music, things get repeated, That's and in poetry. So that's why we've got you are. You are. You are. What a beautiful pussy you are. I think it has been set to music. That's the only bit of the music I can remember. So... There we are, that's the scenario, that's the story so far. The owl singing to the pussy, who he obviously loves. What is going to happen next? Well, we shall see in a moment. Okay, so moving on to the second verse. Let's see what happens next. Pussy, that's the cat, said to the owl, the bird, quotation mark. You elegant fowl. Now, a fowl, can you guess, is another word for a bird. Okay. But of course it has to rhyme. 
with owl because this is a poem and a lot of poems have rhyming in them. Owl, fowl. Okay, there's quite a lot more in this verse. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl. Elegant is, oh, very smart, looking really good. Okay, elegant fowl. How charmingly sweet you sing. So she loves his singing. She thinks it's sweet and charming. Okay. <gasps> what happens next? She's proposing to him. Oh, let us be married. Now, this is 1871, and in 1871, it was very unusual for the lady to propose to the man. But this is a nonsense poem, so that's probably why. And she's a cat, he's an owl. Anything goes, really. So, let us be married. Too long we have, what's that, tarried? What's tarried? What do you think? It means waited, we've delayed, held back. So, waited. And again, tarried, married. He had to use tarried, really, didn't he? To rhyme with married. Otherwise, it wouldn't sound as good. So, they've been thinking of marriage for quite some time, apparently but they've held back for some reason, perhaps because they're different species, you know. Anyway, let's carry on. But what shall we do for a ring? A ring, okay. First thing you think of when you're getting married, oh, must have a ring, yeah. Mm. Well, some people might think of that first, not everybody. Better not go into more detail on that. Okay. They sailed away for a year and a day. Away, a day had to happen, didn't it? Um, a year and a day often happens in stories, fairy tales. To the land where the bong tree grows. I don't know if there is such a thing as a bong tree. It just sounds exotic and funny so and there in a wood where the trees are growing in a wood a piggy wig stood a piggy wig is just a pig but again it's a, a a name that children give to pigs piggy wig um, because edward lear a lot of his poems children enjoyed them but adults enjoyed them as well so a piggy wig stood, a pig in the wood, oh, wood, and stood with a ring at the end of his nose. You know, pigs have rings in the end of their nose often, maybe to tie them up to something, which isn't very nice, really. But anyway, he has a ring at the end of his nose. His nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Same repetition as before. Okay, so perhaps we can all guess what's going to happen next, but uh, let's move on to the third and final verse and we'll, we shall see. Okay, third and final verse. So, another quotation mark. So, someone is speaking, either the owl or the pussycat, we're not sure. Dear pig, they're speaking to the pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Now, the word order is a bit, but dear pig, are you willing to sell your ring for one shilling? They are offering a shilling. Now, if you don't know what a shilling is, obviously, willing and shilling, it had to happen because they rhyme. A shilling was an old coin, which we don't have anymore. This is not a shilling, but it's similar. It, it was a small silvery colored coin. This has flattened edges, but it's totally round, maybe slightly bigger than this. This is a modern 
20 pence piece from the UK, but a shilling was worth a 20th of a pound, believe it or not, um, before the decimal currency came in. But we won't get into that. That will be a, another lesson, I promise, a lesson on the old currency. Okay, so they're offering a shilling to the pig for his ring. Okay, willing, meaning I will, I am happy to do this. So, said the pig, piggy, I will. So yes, he's agreeing to sell his ring in exchange for a shilling coin. So, they took it away. They took the, the ring away and were married next day. That was quick. Oh, of course, if you want to get married, you go to a turkey. Yeah, a tur do you know what a turkey is? Another bird. <laughs> there are lots of birds here. That's another bird. Now, in, in the UK, we, we eat turkeys at Christmas. It's our traditional bird that we eat. I think in America, they eat the turkey uh, for Thanksgiving in November. So it's a sort of traditional bird. Not good news for turkeys, but anyway, this turkey apparently has the power to marry people. So the turkey who lives on the hill. Okay, so that was convenient again. So they get married by the turkey and then of course they have to have their reception, their meal to celebrate. So what do they eat? They dined, meaning they had their dinner on mince, which is sort of meat in little pieces, little pieces of beef usually, little pieces of beef that have been cut up into small pieces, mince, and slices of quince. We're rhyming again. Uh, a quince is a kind of fruit that grows on trees and a slice, you cut it, cut it into slices, cutting into slices. So mince and quince, why not? Sounds good. Main course, pudding, dessert. Yep, sounds good. Which they ate, past tense of to eat, they ate with a, what kind of spoon? A runcible spoon. Runcible, while well, they're using a spoon for their food, at least they're not using their hands. They're using a spoon. It's a runcible spoon. Now, I had to look this up to find out what a runcible spoon is. But if you think of a, a spoon that's like this, but it has pieces cut into it like a fork. So it's a combination of a spoon and a fork with pointed pieces. And one edge of it is sharp, so you can cut with it. Okay, that's a runcible spoon. If you look it up, runcible spoon, on Google Images, you'll see lots of pictures of these things. Okay. And hand in hand, do owls and cats have hands? Never mind. It should be wing and paw, shouldn't it? Owls have wings and cats have paws. But anyway, hand in hand. Ah, oh, this is why it has to be hand, because they're on the sand. It's the rhyming again. Hand in hand on the edge of the sand. So they must be by the sea. The sand is by the sea. So they're right near the sea on the edge of the sand. They danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. And that's the end of the story. So... 
I think we can devise a quiz on this poem. So if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, and have a look at the quiz, see if you've understood the poem, and we'll see you again soon, I hope. Thanks for listening. Bye.